Okay, Charlton Festival coming to 2023. So I think now, I'd say from memory, there's probably my, from a betting perspective, my 10th or 11th real genuine Charlton Festival where I've really got involved. There's plenty of memories. TC and Ross, I'm sure you've got them as well. Throughout the years, I'm sure there's been some really, really, really good days and some horrible days as well. I think we've talked about Gallop and Deschamps in the main podcast, but I know that must be something that you still probably think about hot sweats and cold sweats in the night but are there any punting memories that really live well in the memory and, and what's your worst ever worst ever Cheltenham memory from a betting perspective well I think probably my my best and it's perhaps shaped how I view things actually thinking about it was was sprinter sack when he come back to win his champion chase I just had this unwavering belief in the horse. I just remember seeing him at Cheltenham as just a gorgeous, gorgeous horse. Mm. Had unwavering faith in him. So that was a good one. Uh, Mike Bike, when he won the RSA, I'd been really keen on him since he fell in the Feltham. Um, and then there was that absolute joy as he came sauntering down the hill to devastation as he went off to see the stables and then to find that he'd actually got back up on the line as well. That was brilliant. And then devastation. I mean, Galloping to Trump is up there. Mm because it was a financial hit, but also I like seeing good horses do good things. But probably the worst was uh, a good few years back now, had an anti-post uh, accumulated bet. Um, Uxisandra for the Ryanair, he won. Under So, who was quite good odds for the Arco early on because he hadn't gone to the spring festivals as a, as a hurdler, he won. Martello Tower, as a second season novice, won the uh, Albert Bartlett. Um, and then I had Jack Adam, in the Gold Cup, who got beaten by the novice Connie Gray and Jack mm. Adam back at 66 to 1. So it would have been a nice, nice oh. payday. It was painful. And you got all the way to the end of the week as well. Yeah. And it's hard. Do you still do those over course of multiple days kind of bets? Because it's something that, especially when I was at university, it was, they were fun. They kept you going. They kept you interested. And the layouts were, were huge. But there's so much risk involved. Yeah, I think it's got harder. I mean, it used to be probably the balance of my bets would mostly be anti-post bets done before the the month before and then very few mm. bets in the actual month. Whereas now it's virtually come the other round. I think it's very hard because there's more races and the horses are, are largely concentrated among a small number of stables. And so you do get occasions where the horse is perhaps not running in the be race best suited to itself. It's running in the race that best suits connections and the trainer. So mm. it's, it's just add an extra layer of complexity. So I actually will do most of my betting on the day of the races. So bet Tuesday for Tuesday, Wednesday for Wednesday. There'll be a few occasions where a form line that you like has been franked or dented that you might go a little bit early in the week, but no, most of, most of them on the day now. I like how you're saying that those memories have shaped what what how you approach your betting now and I think that using your kind of gut instinct around a horse and using the experience that you've had especially around the very good horses putting in one bad run and being primed for the big occasion that can really hold true and it gives you more confidence when you've when you've seen it materialize yeah, I mean, if Sprinter Sacro got beaten and, and not turned up maybe I'd have been thinking Shishkin was yeah exactly you know, not going to come back <clears throat> yeah it's um yeah we need you need those good days like horses do you need need the days to, to learn something about how you're going to go forward from a Cheltenham Festival perspective. Tom, I say it's the same as I know that the flat racing is your number one, but Chel there's something about Cheltenham, isn't it? It doesn't matter what kind of racing fan you are. You can get behind it. It's something for everyone. And there's, there's, it's, it's always tends to be, or do you think it's, how do you think it from a betting perspective now, is it as good a week to get punting as it, as it was early on when you first got interested in it? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, I enjoy Royal Ascot more from a viewing spectacle, but from a betting spectacle, Cheltenham Festival is the one. Um, it's hard to come up with a, a favorite memory, I have to say. And all, mm. you're going to sound like you're after timing in this question, no matter what you say. So I thought I'd go for one that was uh, well publicized on my own Twitter, which was Side of Burley back in 2019 in the Potemps final. I love this horse. We were doing podcasts from November before, and then he ran the qualifier in December, back from 25s all the way into 16s. Was reporting on the day as well for Racing Post in my former role, uh, back to him again at 92. I lost my voice because it looked like he wasn't going to win. Mm. But Barry Geraghty <laughs> produced arguably the best ride of all time in my obviously very biased opinion. <laughs> Humble opinion. <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> on side of Verlet. It was just a phenomenal memory and one I will never forget. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. And I think maybe probably similar to Ross because of that 
that's a race and we've talked about it again in the podcast like Albert Bartlett from last year it's a race that you kind of yeah you want to get right because you've done it before you exactly. feel like you've you've obviously got a niche for it yeah exactly that get it right once yeah. and getting it right well with a horse that has, was a big price then went off a short price in a tricky race you just want to do it over and over again because you get that buzz. It's just like watching horse racing and backing your first ever winner. Mm. You know, once you back your first winner, God, you want another one, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's what's really nice. And I think that's what's great about Cheltenham. I'd love to hear actually from, from listeners and viewers about races that you just, you feel like you can get right, that you like to work out, that, that have gone well for you in the past before. Um, Albert Bartlett is definitely, definitely one that I like from last year. But one of my memories, I remember I backed uh, Manella Indo for the Gold Cup the first year that when, when he, when he won, but I backed to Manti post sometime like September. And I actually think his race, the plan into his win didn't go as according to plan yeah. as they wanted to. He got beat at Christmas time. And I was sitting on this. It was definitely, it, it wasn't non run, no bet. It was like 25 to one. And I think he went out and then came in again. And I was thinking, I may, may as well tear this up. And then he went, came out and won. And I was thinking, proud of myself that I stuck to my guns, but also proud of myself that whatever he showed me at that stage, I wanted to back him then. And he, there's sometimes there is value around anti-post betting. You've got to believe your eyes, haven't you? Yeah. If you think it, it, because if you hold on to it and don't, there's enough media surrounding it now that someone that, whose opinion you respect will say it hasn't got a chance and it can without really realising, change your, your own opinion. Yeah, exactly. You've got to back, back yourself, as we've done, and as we hope we, we will do um, this year round. Any, other, any others? Any worst ever? Any Cheltenham bad beats? Too many. Too yeah. many bad beats. Uh, I'm sure like everyone else, Annie Powell would be at the top, but you know she's too obvious to have in here. Uh, one before I started betting, but in a family tipping competition, Mal Jamar back in 2009. And the reason why I say him is because the amount of times I see the replay of Wichita Lyman and Tony McCoy yeah. coming fast down the outside and Mal Jamar getting beat, still not over it quite clearly um but i would say the worst beat from a betting perspective was probably oscar delta in the fox hunters back in 2013 ridden by jane mangan back to him at 33s back to him at 25s wasn't overly confident small bets not big bets but when you get the fox hunters right well yeah. for a person who likes flat racing i was celebrating inside i think i would have got the most reward but the horse crashed out after jumping the last four lengths clear of South Spy. Looked like the race was at its mercy. Crashed out through the, the face, uh, false rail and that was game over. So I will never forget that. But, uh, you know, you've got to take the highs and the lows in this game. Oh, you do. And actually to that point, one one thing that we we spoke about is that there's always a shock at Cheltenham. There's always something. There's always the, the Goshen moment, the Galloping de Champ mm. moment, the Annie Power moment. There's something's going to happen this year that's going to shock us. Any any thought? I know I'm giving this off the top of your head here, but is there anything you think you wouldn't be surprised if something quite mental happens there? Here we go. The UK win the press break. <laughs> Not right. sure about that. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> right, he's lost it. Have a big lead after day one. <laughs> You'll be looking like uh, a very smart guy if you come if that comes in right now. I'll yeah, let's get that a bit quick. <laughs> yeah, someone's going to fall somewhere at the final. Hopefully, every every all jockeys and horses get come out okay. Yeah. But something there's and it's going to be in a novice race, and it, it does always happen. But there will be some sort of shock. But I don't know. I think that. This is very controversial, but I don't think Willie Mullins is going to have as great a week as we think he will. That is a bold prediction. Mm -hmm. I don't think he'll have as many winners as he did last year. No, I think that's a fair shout, yeah. But it, it, very well, yeah, it, yeah, but yeah. Anyone, for, by anyone's standards, he'd probably have seven or eight, but I don't think he'll have five on one day like he did last year. The, the, the novices are definitely not as bomb-proof mm -hmm. as they've been previously. Yeah. But I just want to put one more idea into TC's head before we go. So he was saying that obviously you get to see which I'm Richard Lyman beating Mal Jamal those times. Every time now he sees the finish of a race at Charlton, he's going to see the permanent white rail instead of the rope. <laughs> I know. You through, and that can remind you every time now. You see, you see it. It that does. Manga moment. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Right. Well, great memories. We'd love to hear your memories, your your worst, your Cheltenham bad beat, your, your best punting memory, all the stories, what you think might be the shock this year, the races that you like to get studying for, for the Cheltenham Festival and the the, the puzzles that you like to solve. Um, thank you to Ross and thank you to TZ for giving us some of your best memories from Cheltenham.